bum, ba bum, 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 bee, ba bum. The Olympics are going on and we're hearing a lot of national anthems at the moment. It's quite a weird cultural practice when you think of it. Somebody jumps as far as they can and then they win a prize. And after that, we all stand around and sing a song. Singing produces a sense of collectivity, a sense of community that perhaps is greater than you would normally feel. It's a, a ritual, a ritual practice that brings people together. Hi, I'm Nicholas Matthew. I'm a professor in the music department here at UC Berkeley, and this is Academic Review National Anthems. Oh yes, I know this one well. This one is God Save the King, or God Save the Queen, depending on who's in charge. I suppose you could say it's the earliest national anthem, but in a way it predates nations. It predates the idea of nation states, and that's partly why it's called God Save the King, not we love Great Britain or England is so cool. And actually, the song goes way back, probably to the 1500s, probably based on an anthem, a church anthem. Of course, church is one of the other places where you'll find people singing together to create a sense of heightened community. And it's for that reason, you know, that, that it's an old church song, that it sounds kind of weird, actually. This is quite repetitive, isn't it, God Save the King? Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 over and over again. Um, and yet, it was so successful, particularly in the 18th century, uh, bringing all the different kingdoms of Britain together, that actually a lot of other countries were very jealous of it. Many other countries borrowed the tune and put their own words to it. In fact, it was the tune of the Prussian or German national anthem right the way through until the early 20th century. Uh, Americans will know a version of it called My Country Tis of Thee. Tis of thee. And it's still the tune of the Liechtenstein national anthem. Ah, so this is the French national anthem known as the Marseillaise. You might recognise it, I guess, from the start of the Beatles' uh, All You Need Is Love. It's a song that comes from the other place where people sing together to create heightened collective feeling. That's the military. It's basically a war song. And you can hear that. It has these dotted rhythms, long, short. Bum, ba bum, 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 bee, ba bum. It became the anthem of revolutionary France in 1795, just three years after it was composed by Claude Joseph Rouget. But a lot of people were jealous of it. It was taken up. Uh, by many other countries, including revolutionaries in Haiti in the 1790s. And in fact, there are many Haitian versions that survive that uh, describe killing Frenchmen. Well, this is the German national anthem, but actually it has a, a pretty interesting history. Uh, the Austrian state, which was part of the Habsburg Empire, was one of those states that was very jealous of God Save the King. And, and so they commissioned the most famous composer in the world, probably at that time, called Joseph Haydn, to compose a version of God Save the King. And what he came up with was God Save Emperor France. The tune is much more like a late 18th century tune. It's actually a banger. It's a really good tune. It has these very even phrases. Um, da di da di da da di da di da di da di da di da di. And he manages to pack in a high point. Di da di da di di da di da di da 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 di da da da. Great tune. Ah, well, we all know this one. This is uh, the Star Spangled Banner. A lot of people will say this is by Francis Scott Key, but actually that's not 100% true. Francis Scott Key wrote the lyrics, whereas the tune is a bit like all of our other national anthems, quite an old one that has different words put to it. It's actually 
called the Anacreontic Song. It comes from the 18th century. And we've had singing together in church. We've had singing together in the military. Where's the other place where dudes sing together? This is a drinking song that was repurposed to be the national song of the United States. I think we all know this is quite hard to sing. It was pretty hard to sing. I had to learn it when I got my citizenship. The reason it's hard to sing is because, like the Marseillaise and God Save the King and the Emperor's Hymn, it has a high point. But man, this high point's high. The land of the free. That's everyone's favourite high point where you feel most American, isn't it? Um, but if you start too high, if you start too high, you screw that bit up. I would class the Star Spangled Banner as the most technically challenging national anthem. Now this is the Brazilian national anthem. And uh, all of our examples have been from Europe, America, Euro America. This one is from outside uh, that sphere. And you might wonder, I've often wondered this listening to anthems at the Olympics, why aren't there more anthems that sound as if they're not from Europe? And why isn't the Brazilian national anthem, I don't know, like samba or something? Um, well, there's a good reason for that, of course. Europeans invented the idea of nationalism, and so it's perhaps understandable that these songs, which apparently spring from the soil of nations, would express that European idea. And the Brazilian national anthem is a good example. It was composed by someone called Francisco Manuel da Silva, who, like the rest of the Portuguese court in Lisbon, was kicked out in 1809 by Napoleon and transferred wholesale to Brazil. Uh, actually, would you believe his teacher was someone called Sigismond Neukom, who in turn was taught by Joseph Haydn. So uh, we have a direct line back to the composer of the Kaiser hymn, which is now the tune of the German national anthem. Uh, it, this doesn't sound as hymn-like as the German national anthem. In fact, if you know any 19th century Italian opera, it might remind you of that. It's a sort of operatic march. <laughs> Now this is a pretty unique case. This is the South African National Anthem. For many years, the National Anthem of South Africa was Die Stem, uh, which is in Afrikaans, um, a kind of a Dutch hymn. But at the same time, black South Africans, and particularly you know, black Africans in the continent, often sang the closer hymn, uh, Nkosi Sikeleli Afrika, as a symbol of pan-African resistance. And this became tremendously important in the anti-apartheid movement. So there was a question in the 1990s about which song should continue to be the national song of South Africa. And what they came up with is basically the first mash-up national anthem. It starts with the Kosi Sikeleli Africa, which is, like so many national songs, a hymn and then it pivots halfway through into Die Stem in Afrikaans. And in fact, it's the only national anthem in the world that is in not just two, but five different languages. So this is an interesting one. This is the Indian national anthem. And maybe to some Euro-American ears, this might sound like an anthem that is more distinctive to the country that it comes from. It's known as Jana uh, Gana Mana. It's the song of India, and it's a kind of a Brahmo hymn, like so many anthems. It's a hymn um, written in the 1910s by the great Indian Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore. And even though it's often accommodated to European style, orchestral instruments, certainly the versions you tend to hear at events like the Olympics tend to sound quite symphonic. Nonetheless, it sort of uses a raga, which is a kind of collection of pictures from traditional Indian so-called classical music, and you can kind of hear it. Uh, you can kind of hear it in the fact that this actually rather beautiful melody 
often repeats notes quite a lot, much more than you will find in something like Haydn's Emperor Hymn or the Marseillaise. It has quite a variety of phrase structures and little ornaments within a general plan that is fairly straightforward and actually quite anthem-like. OK, so that was Academic Review National Anthems. And whether you're Chinese or Japanese or Italian or French or South African, maybe you'll listen a bit more carefully to the anthems that we hear this summer. And you can decide, are they military songs, church songs or drinking songs? <laughs>